So this weekend, I had this plan for a very long time. I have a really good friend who is a producer in Los Angeles, and he's kind of well known, you know, in the world of producing. And I've been friends with him for many, many years, probably like 20 years at this point, like way before he was a big muckety muck. Like when I knew him, he was like a little muck, Mm -hmm. like just, you know, he was barely a muck. He was like a, a, you know, like just just starting out, just 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 mucking out. So. He's been doing what he's been doing for many, 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 many years now, right? Um, so every so often he flies into New York uh, to do like, you know, work stuff. And I get to see him and he's in town and we always make a plan and have dinner afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, Joe was available last time he wasn't. So now we were all going out to dinner, this big, big plan, right? I get this text from him a couple of days before we're supposed to meet. And he says, I have to leave. I can't meet you. I got to get out of, I got to get back to LA. Sorry. Catch you another time. Very abrupt, mm-hmm. you know, like so first family I'm, issue or animal I didn't issue. Know. Or yeah, I didn't whatever. know. He, he didn't say, he didn't okay. say. And the thing is I've known him long enough and well enough that if it's something to do with his parents, he would say, dad's sick, gotta mm-hmm. go, you know, or I know he was having issues. Like he, his cat was having some health issues. Like, you know, cat not doing well you know something like that like he would have said what was going on in his life and he didn't he just it was very abrupt it was like gotta leave town sorry not gonna see you bye and that was it Mm -hmm. so i was trying to figure out what it was and i reread the text and i remembered that when you and i left one of our radio stations of the many places we've worked (laughs) we left very abruptly and we canceled stuff Without any explanation. Sorry, we're not going to make it Thursday. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not going to see you Tuesday. You know, just need to cancel. And that was that. We didn't give an explanation. So I thought, oh, my God, he got fired. Because that's the only explanation I can think of why he would cut his business trip short in the middle before like the actual business was taking place this week. Mm -hmm. So we were like going to hang out over the weekend. And then he had a whole week of business stuff to do. So he was cutting his trip short before it even got started. So. I didn't know why I let it go. I figured I'll hear from him when I hear from him. And Joe, my boyfriend says, why don't you Google it just to see if it's out there on Google? And I Googled it and his name came up and apparently he got me too. No. Yes. How bad is it? Well, okay. So he's being accused of several things. He's being accused of being a misogynist because I guess an actor had come in. He also does coaching. He was an agent for a long time. So I know he also does coaching. Mm -hmm. And I know that if like an actor comes to him and says, like, can you help me? I want to build my brand. I want to make a business. He's going to be brutally honest with them. He's one of those people. He doesn't sugarcoat stuff. He's very like honest. So my guess is an actress had come to him and said, you know, I'm getting these types of roles. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. Like, what do you suggest? You probably said change your image. Like the image you're putting out there is the image that is the reason why you're getting cast as X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. So he said to her, you know, stop wearing that, wear this instead. He like told her how to dress and how to present herself because that's what he does as an agent and a manager and a coach. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like he walked up to some random girl on the street and said, don't wear that. Or he was at a casting and said to somebody during the casting, ew, what are you wearing? He would never do that. Mm Mm-hmm. So the women that have come forward that said that he had said misogynist things to them about their attire and about their sexual appeal or whatever. Um, Listen, I've known him a long time. He's got a great sense of humor. He's very like a dry sense of humor. He has said to me, like, you still with this boyfriend? Come on. You're not really in love with him. How much longer are you going to be with him? Mm -hmm. When when are you going to come? When are you going to come live in L.A. and, and be my girlfriend? But it's a joke. I've known him for all these years. He and I have both been single at the same time. There's never been any interest on either of our parts. It's just the way he is. And it's just it's it's part of his humor. Mm -hmm. So people are bringing stuff like that up and saying, well, he said to me, um, how serious are you with your boyfriend? There's no way you're you're single. There's no way you're in a relationship walking around like that. You know, whatever. However, he talks, you know. Mm -hmm. I would never be friends with somebody who was a misogynist. Never. I, I I'm. I've got radar for that kind of thing. Well, he's a New York guy in L.A., so right there, his attitude is different than everybody else also. 
That's you got a good that point New York also. attitude. The other thing he's being accused of is being a transphobe and a homophobe. And it's not because he has ever said anything transphobic or homophobic. It's because he doesn't cast enough mm-hmm. trans people and gay people in roles. But it's not up to him. He doesn't decide what the roles are. It's it's up to the director. So the director sends him a list. I need a girl with red hair. I need um, a black guy who's 30. I need an old guy who's 64. He could be any ethnicity. I don't care. You know, I mean, like all that stuff is written in there. It's not his fault that they don't give opportunities or, or ask for trans people. And, and, you know, the truth is they shouldn't have to. If someone is a trans cast, woman, you should just cast whoever's best for the part. Doesn't that's matter. what I'm saying. If, if someone is. is a trans, if someone is a trans woman, they can go up for a role as a woman and that's it. And then you, mm-hmm. you now you you've been cast as a woman and you happen to be trans big f-ing deal, you know, but he has been accused of being transphobic because he's not casting enough trans people. Mm-hmm. And I think that if he met some trans people who were really talented, he would have cast them. But I guess the people that came across his at his castings just weren't right for the role. It had nothing to do with what their sexuality. He could care less who you're sleeping with. What does he care? Mm. So it all got started by this one actress who this is sort of her platform. She has taken down other people in the past. She's known for that. So she continually goes after people. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, her career didn't go the way she wanted it to. So now she's the defender. And I think it's great. Listen, you should defend people, especially if they need your defense. Mm. But in this scenario, do you know I mean? it's not. Is it just one woman or is it a couple of different women? It's one woman who has sounded the alarm and asked people for their experiences with him Mm -hmm. and a lot of people who didn't get anywhere in their careers are they're not saying well i wasn't talented enough they're saying oh well um he didn't hire me because i'm gay would you have proof of that has he said listen i would hire you but for this part please marry right you know what i mean like it's just not that's not who he is it's and he's been doing this for so many years why now why is it coming through now Mm -hmm. And it's because one person complained to her and she is the voice of this. So I don't don't know the story. I don't know what's going on. You know, you don't know know his side. You don't know her side. You're just I don't know anyone's side. You're just saying what you know of the guy. Right. I mean, from what I know of the guy and I've known him a long time, Mm -hmm. I know that he can come across harsh. And I think people take his harshness as. They take it personally, but they're in an industry where you can't take that stuff personally. I mean, listen, I, I've, you know, I've, I've been, I've auditioned for stuff and people are like, no, you're too short to you're wrong for the role or whatever it is. You can't you be like it. that nowadays though, because everybody's got to get a part. Everybody's got to get a trophy, everybody. And if you don't get it, you're going to scream that it was something against you and not you. But most so. of these people are saying 15 years ago, he or 10 years ago. He, no one's mm. saying this happened last week. Oh. That's the thing. They're bringing up stuff that happened years ago. I don't remember what happened 10 years ago. Well, yeah, I don't You know, there's a couple of people that are coming forward and saying this. So if it was just one person, then I would say, well, that's one bitter person whose right. career didn't go so, the way they wanted to. But the fact that there's now a couple of people who have come forward, but I just, I don't know. I can't wrap my mind around this because that's the, what they're describing. And I've read some of these posts and some of the things people are writing about him. That's not the guy I know. Mm-hmm. Well, but, I mean, I can just imagine all the people I didn't hire for one reason or another and the crap that they could say about me. It's just, I didn't hire you. You weren't right. Right. You know, so I don't know. Until you get the the sense from both parties, it's hard to make that. But I'm glad you're in his court because you're a friend. Yeah, but I wouldn't. What I'm saying is I would not be friends with this guy if he was any of these things that that people are describing. I couldn't be friends with somebody that was a transphobe, homophobe, misogynist. Mm -hmm. Obviously not, because I'm, I'm always on the side of the feminists. 
you know, I, I have I have more gay and trans friends than most of my gay and trans friends. Mm. So I would never be friends with somebody if I thought that they were. That they that they had that they harbored these feelings or thought this way. So I don't know. So anyway, so this friend of mine that's being accused of all of these things that's being, as they say, me too. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to get fired. I don't know if this is going to make national news. I mean, it's I, I, I looked it up. It wasn't it's not like it's being reported in you know major papers. It's just a few people on social media that are saying this. Mm. So I don't know how big a deal this is going to be. But if it is going to be a very big deal. We'll talk more about it, obviously. Yeah, No, we're talking everybody about one of Cooper's friends. Yeah, a friend of mine, in case, in case you're just joining us, it's a friend of mine who was in from L.A., who I was supposed to see. He, I've been friends with him for 15 years or more, and he abruptly left New York. And I Googled to find out why, and it was because he's being accused of... Me too. Yeah, me too type stuff, where he's being accused of being a homophobe, a transphobe, and a misogynist mm-hmm. by not hiring enough uh, gay people, trans people, and women. Right. People yeah. are getting ongoing. I don't know what, who are we talking about. Uh, one of Cooper's friends. There you go. Why is it my fault that you're late? <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's why I don't like teaching school <laughs> because if I'm in, if I'm teaching a class and I'm into mm. how to do something and you come in 20 minutes late, now I got to stop and, and catch you up. Right. No. Go back and listen to the replay later. <laughs> That's what the replay is for. Go back and listen to that. 